Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about G-Develop. Now this is one of those game engines I actually recommend quite often to newer developers. It actually works with more experienced developers as well, but this is a very newbie-friendly game engine. So if you want to go ahead and check it out, it's available at gdevelop.io. Uh, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and we we're talking about it specifically today because G-Develop 5.4 was just released, and uh, yeah, we'll get back to exactly what that means in just a second, but 5.4 is here. First, let's do a little bit of hands-on time with G-Develop itself, and here is G-Develop. Developer. We're going to go ahead and create a new project. One of the big things I like about it is it's got all of these learning materials. So there is a, a bunch of tutorials to walk through, a bunch of templates to start with. You've got uh, a shop available as well, a number of free contents on the shop as well, uh, which is quite nice. What we're going to do again, go ahead, we'll create something from a template. Uh, in terms of templates available, there are an absolute ton of templates to get you up and started. I uh, will use the platformer now. I uh, will go ahead and create that one and sure, create a new project. So this is the new project creation aspect of GDevelop, as you saw, very simple. Here you see the world editing environment. This is mostly a 2D game engine. It can, it's got nascent 3D support, but it's mostly a 2D game engine at this point in time. Instantiating things in the world is super simple. I want to add a fly to the world. Boom, I just added it into the world. Uh, in terms of controlling objects, the scene itself is controlled with this spreadsheet style approach. Uh, so you can think of it almost like cause and effect. So uh, the event that occurred and the action to do when that event occurs. Everything here uh, is basically clickable and you can select new options there. Uh, you can add new actions this way. A number of different actions are available uh, on the fly. Now, another thing I really like about GDevelop is how um, integrated all the tooling is. So for example, here is our main character. I can go ahead with this guy right here and I can just go back and I can edit the object. What you'll notice here is you have full animations available here. So we can we can preview our animations there, but we can even go one step further and have a full animation and pixel editor, uh, Piscal, is actually integrated and built in. I believe there's a similar thing for uh, audio as well. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got a number of predefined behaviors. And the other neat thing is you can actually add a lot of these things. You can add them from their store so you go into the asset store and you can grab a bunch of sprites to work with. This is really good for beginners because you've got all of these packs available quite often uh, completely free. And when you have everything you need when you're just starting out, it just makes the process so much easier. Then we get into the uh, behavior or logic side of things. We saw that spreadsheet approach and you can use that spreadsheet aspect, but you can also go ahead and just use behaviors. And behaviors are kind of like predefined building blocks of game logic. So for example, here I can see all the various different behaviors that are available. So if I wanted to add a draggable object into my scene, I literally just give the draggable object behavior to this guy, and then I can change the behaviors of that particular behavior. And that's that's about it. Now the other reason why I'm in here is I'm going to showcase the other new feature, the big new feature of the GDevelop 5.4 release, and that is this guy right here. So if I want to add multiplayer to my game, I'm 95% of the way there. I just created this guy as a multiplayer object, and now GDevelop on the back end will automatically do the synchronization of that object for us. Uh, there's more to it than that. You also have, um, uh, oops, that's not it. I want to cancel, and I want to cancel. You also have full support for things like lobbies and so on. So here we are in our level event. You'll come down here. I'm going to add in a new event add a condition. And what you'll see here is under your other conditions, you now have this section here for multiplayer right here. And then you've got controls for things like lobbies. Uh, so uh, you can have a lobby. Uh, so when a player sinks in, when they leave and so on, so you can drop in, drop out support. You can have players join up and sync in the lobbies. Now lobbies are available in the free tier. Uh, you can have up to eight players. So you're not going to have a big successfully deployed game with multiplayer unless you use one of the commercial tiers here, but you can develop a game for you and your friends of up to eight players. And then the commercial tiers do get unlimited lobbies. So then you can have, so it looks like there's going to be a fixed limit right now of eight players per game, but you can have unlimited lobbies going forward, which is kind of nice. And all of it's just basically handled using these simple, um, these simple commands here uh, and by tagging an object as being multiplayer. So by far and away, the biggest new feature of this release is the way that multiplayer works. They also did a refactoring of how variables work. Let's head on back over to the uh, the release notes side of things. So by the way, if you do want to check out gdevelop, as I said, gdevelop.io available on, uh, again, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And the even cooler part is it's actually available on the Android and iOS app stores as well. And that visual programming language actually works really well with the touch screen. So this is one of the most, uh, let's say, codable on the go uh, on your phone or tablet type game engines out there. You can also get Godot, for example, uh, to run on mobile. But the thing is, it kind of needs a keyboard. Typing code uh, on a phone sucks without a keyboard hooked up. This guy, it actually, it's pretty fun to code with as well. So it's one of those things to be aware of. Uh, in terms of the functionality of the 5.4 release, 
So uh, again, the big new feature here is the G-Develop multiplayer. So it's ready to use lobbies for your game and user interface. It allows your players to start a new game. You can have two to eight players in each lobby. Built-in authentication for players to create account and log into your game. Automatic synchronization of players. That's the um, multiplayer behavior we saw earlier on. Uh, depending on who is in charge of each game object, generally the first person that joins in is the host and is in charge of synchronization across all the other players. Automatic synchronization of the rest of the game state, game objects, variables, and visual effects. Out-of-the-box client-side prediction of game logic and object behaviors, and soon there'll be automated uh, compression to reduce the bandwidth usage. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check it out, they do have this YouTube video. It's like seven and a half minutes long. Uh, we'll actually show you how to create a simple multiplayer game, and it's really quite straightforward and easy to work with. So they have done a good job of creating this new multiplayer solution. If you're going to want to, you know, have control over your own servers, etc., you're going to have to roll your own. But if you're good with, um, you know, easy, uh, they've created one of the easiest multiplayer solutions you've got out there. Uh, in terms of scaling, so it's built in so it can scale from no players to thousands of players playing your game. The free accounts have one lobby available for the game, and then all the uh, other tiers. So Silver, Gold, and Pro, you get unlimited lobbies, uh, so you can have any number of players. And then Golden Pro will get access to advanced features such as lobby administration, matchmaking teams, and so on. And there's some monetization and multiplayer stuff coming in the future. Uh, on top of that, so it's not just multiplayer with the GDevelop 5.4 release. We also have uh, a reworking of the way variables are done. So global or scene variables of any type can now be used with a unique action and condition. For example, you no longer need to choose between an action to modify a scene or global variable as there's now a single action for it. In the action, both global and scene variables can be used. You also don't need to choose a different action for a number, text, or Boolean variable. Um, it is now important to declare your variables in scene variables. You can open these when editing events too, so you don't uh, lose much time in case you forgot to create one before working on an action or condition. Auto completion will be there to help you fill in the fields more quickly. Uh, and then also here, this release adds, you know, introduces the local variable concept. Local variable is more or less a variable that lasts for a very short period of time, then goes out of scope and is gone. So this is perfect for temporary usage in events or when writing algorithms. Um, and extension variables, uh, which are perfect for storing data inside an extension without cluttering up scene variables. So a lot of refactoring to the way that uh, variables actually worked. If you don't use gdevelop already, all of that was gibberish to you. But if you're using gdevelop, you're going to have some pretty profound changes as a result of that. And then a couple more features here are there's now diagnostics reports. Uh, those will show missing variables or behaviors, uh, help you find hidden bugs, uh, more community badges, enhanced player login in the leaderboards, and a brand new curriculum and educational resource. And I think actually all of the, the training and the branding and the uh, educational stuff I think is the key part of GDevelop. So that's always nice to see there. And then since 5.4 till now, we've also had some other improvements here, including one-click export to iOS uh, with automatic update, upload to the App Store available. So publishing to iOS is super simple. Uh, UI improvements, including a redesigned instance property panel, streamlined, more efficient to use, support for Spine. Spine is a 2D bone-based animation software. Um, and you can now import the files generated by Spine and use them for animations in your games. Uh, blazing fast background loading of game resources. Games can launch immediately and continue loading in the background. And version history for cloud projects. Here you can see the new multiplayer. And then we got a number of new extensions, both community and otherwise here for things like shockwave effects, bullet firing, and so on. Uh, and then again, if you want to get into more details, there are the full release notes available here. Um, and it's more or less the same stuff, just a little bit more details about like bug fixes and other little changes that have happened as well. And then if you want to get into multiplayer itself, there is specific documentation. I will have this linked in the linked article down below that walks you through how to create uh, a multiplayer game. Again, this is about a seven minute long video that shows you how to do it. And here you can see multiplayer in action. So basically the host will automatically send out to all of the other versions out there so that when something is moved, it will synchronize across all the different games. So you can have your, um, your game objects and variables, et cetera, synced as required again, using that multiplayer behavior. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. So if you're checking it out, gdevelop.io, gdevelop 5.4 just released. Biggest new feature, again, is that refactoring of the way variables work and, of course, new multiplayer support. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.